I've said it many a time before and I'll say it again. Horikoshi writes some of the best worlds in fiction. Before we hop in this review of chapter 311 of My Hero Academia, please do me a favor and leave your own thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the videos that get uploaded to the channel. Now, let's get into it. What's up guys, I'm the Pencil here and here we are to review chapter 311 of My Hero Academia, which is titled, which is known as They're Here by Kohei Horikoshi, aka... Sweet mercy, what's wrong with your arm? But let's actually get into it. So I don't know if it's just been like the two week drought. To be fair, I've been like itching for manga, honestly, in the past two weeks, mainly because Golden Week happened and there's nothing updated, like nothing, because obviously things were popping off. Of course I got my webtoons, but just because I got caught up on God of High School, now I gotta wait for that too. But anyway, regardless of that, I think this chapter is a little bit extra spicy because it's been two weeks since we actually had a chapter, but let's actually get into it. So we open up with Endeavor, fighting some people, some enhanced people, some metahumans, if you will. Wait, nope, wrong verse. Basically, some people have these enhancements, the same support items that Redestro had come up with chapters and chapters and chapters ago. All these people are arming themselves with it. And unfortunately, it's not just the civilians arming themselves with support items, it's also the villains. And this is a big thing that I wanted to see more of. Like, support items have mainly just been a thing that's on the market for everybody. So these great weapons that, well, maybe not great, but still weapons that people can use against themselves, against each other, just seemed like a very potent opportunity for villains to use as well, because I'm pretty sure the last time we saw villains attacking somewhere that wasn't muscular, obviously, like a whole group of villains, they were using quirks. They weren't exactly using these support items, mainly because they were fresh out of jail. But these people may still be fresh out of jail, considering they're called jailbreakers too, but on top of that, they have access to support items, which makes the situation way more complicated for someone like Endeavor, because not only does he have to deal with the idea that, uh-oh, people have quirks I don't know about, they have to fight and interact with, but now they're gonna have different various support items that are going to constantly just get in the way even more. And one of the things I love, obviously, y'all know what I love Horikoshi's world for, and I love how he tortures some of his characters. One of the villains says, this is all your fault. And Endeavors just goes, that's why I'm here. Because he takes responsibility. Ah, Endeavors fantastic. Ah, man, if you don't like Endeavor, I respect your opinion, but I respectfully disagree. But basically, we get to see Endeavor go back. He runs into all these people who are calling him a failure, a liar, a, a deceiver. They're basically calling him out on so many different things. One, the idea that if he hadn't let Shigaraki get away, then none of this would even be happening. Obviously, they don't know the true truth of the situation that basically no one could have stopped Shigaraki from getting away. That man was a monster. But obviously, what are you supposed to tell them that? You can't really tell them that. They aren't even going to believe you likely because of all the stuff that came out about Dobby. But speaking of Dobby, they are talking about all of Dobby's burn victims and how that's actually Endeavor's fault. And here's the thing. Like, I sort of get it, but I don't really get it. Like, I mean, I guess you can blame the parent. You have to blame the parent because, you know, they raised them and all the stuff like that. So I guess you can put all that blame on Endeavor, but like, aren't y'all gonna be mad at Dobby though? Like, Endeavor didn't actually murder these people, that was all Dobby, so I don't know, I mean, like, I understand, yeah, you can't really blame Dobby, because you can't find him, meanwhile, the cause of Dobby is, like, running around the world trying to help y'all, but I guess they believe that, hey, forget it, if we can't get mad at Dobby, we'll get mad at you, Endeavor, and this is a very realistic thing, and the last thing that we get is that Endeavor's still hiding from them, because they know, obviously, that the person that Shigaraki was after isn't them, <laughs> None of them have one for all, they never explained everything fully, obviously for Midoriya's sake, but luckily enough, I think I talked about this a few chapter reviews ago, this is having consequences, like them not letting the world know about one for all is just coming to bite them back, and of course, it's biting them back on the top of a bunch of other things that are biting back against Endeavor, but it's just an extra thing, and I love it so much because this is like Horikoshi at his finest, when he's crafting a world, when he's crafting society, when he's writing a tale, a narrative based in a real feasible world, it makes sense and it's beautiful. Honestly, I could definitely see the world reacting like this. This is a realistic, true to form human reaction to something like Endeavor. Because imagine the people you have to trust to save your lives have suddenly had this tragic past, have done these horrible things, have offspring that have killed a whole bunch of people. And on top of that, after all of this, after creating a era of chaos by pure accident, obviously because you don't fully know the story because they aren't even telling you the full story because they don't assume you'll believe it because you're the general populace, they're still hiding things from you something as important as where the big bad villain's gonna go next. And honestly, 
like that's the thing i since i know the story of what actually happened i'm still leaning towards the side of supporting endeavor and their choice the top three's choice on this but at the same time i fully get where the society is coming from where they just can't trust heroes fully because the heroes don't even trust them fully it's this great balance this great counterbalance this great back and forth i think horikoshi is great at writing and i love seeing it every time it pops up it's beautiful i love it ah okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> moving on to the next point we see that the plan is that deku isn't necessarily hunting but he's kind of hunting like he's bait and i i get it because there's no active way to hunt down one for all or not one for all all for one but at the same time like they keep talking about how should we stay a few more kilometers away from all might and the others if mass media catches on that we're working together midoriya could get in trouble and like i get that but at the same time like what if at the end of this chapter it wasn't this sniper woman what if it was just all for one what if it was just shigaraki like what are y'all supposed to do to help if y'all are so far away and like i know y'all are fast y'all are some speedy boys but y'all riding in a car right now a vehicle what if shigaraki just popped up and said ayo midoriya well looks like no one's here to help you all your hero friends are locked away and i have my perfect body come here boy like i get it but it doesn't seem like the most tactically smart move and here's the thing to be fair once we see a full true to form shigaraki i don't think these guys will be helpful at all anyway they all combined with a whole bunch of extra backup while shigaraki was quirkless couldn't do anything to shigaraki while he was incomplete and his, they literally forced his body to fall apart and that man still got away sure he got hijacked but he still got away so what do you think you're going to do against all for one's actual body which may be there or may not be there to be fair they bring up a good point that all for one may be transferring his conscious over to shigaraki and thus he wouldn't have any reason to bring his real body there mainly keep that as like a relic of the past and just take over shigaraki but even then a full power shigaraki man touches the ground once and y'all all dead like hawks he can fly i'll give him that i never he can fly when he needs to he can hover best genus i guess he could float on some string but honestly i just don't see what y'all doing to like a full power shigaraki but then again Bakugo's keeping up with Midoriya, which is something I said wasn't going to happen because I didn't think the logical power progression would have made sense. But hey, whatever. Bakugo's keeping up. So maybe these all can keep up with this new fully powered Shigaraki because, you know, the power ceiling just has to, it has to rise, but it has to stay like in reach of the characters. So maybe they will be helpful, but I feel like they're a bit too far away to be helpful. Y'all feel what I'm saying? Like, do you feel like they should be closer? Because they want to talk about going farther but i don't think that's very effective especially if midoriya is the bait for y'all to jump shigaraki like i know y'all could probably get there quick enough but i don't know i in terms of shigaraki versus midoriya just in a 1v1 my money isn't on midoriya my man doesn't even have 100 percent control of one for all yet so he's not even on the same level as shigaraki in terms of just raw power and i just don't see it but regardless we go away from that and i love endeavor still like caring about the kid now he's like hey yeah we should stay away because he doesn't he doesn't need he doesn't need all this extra attention like we need to help him out best we can and that, is that a drawing reusage yeah that is honestly i noticed this chapter was a bit short like short short i've been just assuming that um horikoshi isn't feeling or he's going through something right now because he's very very busy at the moment he has to deal with the movie he has to deal with the anime he has to deal with this he has to deal with i think more licensing stuff i think new new like figures are coming out and stuff like that so horikoshi is very very busy so i can definitely understand why this chapter was short it just stood out to me i think it's only like 14 pages 14 pages i know it's supposed to it's not normally that much longer but i can see it and like there's reused art two pages back to back like the one talking endeavor head is the same talking endeavor head on the next page and yeah I don't know, it's always interesting to see and like catch things when they're being reused or stuff like that. Or basically when the manga is being a little bit less detailed. But honestly, with how detailed Horikoshi's art is, I can't get mad at him for wanting to take a couple shortcuts, take a couple breaks. Man's an amazing artist, but obviously no matter how amazing you are, no matter how skilled you are, or talented, or whatever you are you want to use, you gotta take breaks. You gotta take breaks and you gotta be able to understand yourself that, well, I got limits, I can't push myself too much or else I'm gonna hurt myself in the future. And especially when you're publishing a weekly manga, I don't blame a man for holding back a bit. But I just want to point that out just because of something I had noticed. And we get to see that obviously Shigaraki and the League have been hiding out. And they aren't going to just come out and take Midoriya until Shigaraki is fully prepared. For obvious reasons. Like for what reason would they have to come hunt down Deku for one for all if Shigaraki can't even handle it. So I get their plan because they really can't hunt down Shigaraki. Which is kind of interesting 
For some reason, I always, like once it was revealed that Shigaraki could like feel and desire the presence of one for all, I guess it's one of the quirks, he can use search. So maybe if he didn't have search, he wouldn't be able to do it. But I always thought like the two would have like this sort of meeting nexus point where they would like be forced to come together after a little bit. Like they would just be constantly drawn to each other. I don't know. We're quirk stuff. Like that's the thing. I fully accepted quirks as the looser power system that they are. They aren't as specific as I would like them to be. But since I'm accepting it now, I'm now just looking for new possibilities that Horikoshi could possibly add. But we get to see that their next goal will be seizing one for all. And the interesting thing is they're talking about how difficult like i guess all my inventory explained the entire process to them like oh for them to be taken over for one for all to be taken out of midoriya shigaraki and all for one need to have a more collective willpower than eight separate people and that is very true they need all that willpower in order to overwhelm the two the well now shigaraki and all for one need all that willpower to overwhelm the eight people inside one for all and i the thing i find interesting about this chapter is that hawks talks about how he believes that, considering All for One has failed to take One for All back after all these multiple centuries, that Shigaraki must have an exceeding amount of hatred to overwhelm so many people at once. And Bastionis is like, I mean, well, yeah, he, what about it? You do not think that Shigaraki's bad enough? And Hawks says, no, just because he's always laughing. And that's an interesting perspective for Hawks to take, because I honestly thought Hawks was good at reading people. And maybe he is, maybe this is him reading Shigaraki right, but at least from the way that I read Shigaraki, and I know this is, I'm cheating because I have like actual whole arcs based around Shigaraki, but it seems like Shigaraki, even in all the times he was laughing in front of all the other heroes, it was out of hatred, as I was despised, like he did not seem like the nicest guy who didn't seem to have enough hatred, he seemed to despise all y'all. But the interesting thing is, even Endeavor goes to note that Shigaraki may have a lack of heart, and as a Kingdom Hearts fan, I cried a little bit. But regardless of that, the thing is, it's also revealed that they don't really have much manpower focused on finding Shigaraki. They're sort of just hoping that he pops up, which once again, I get it, but now they're talking about removing all that and like focusing more resources on investigating where Shigaraki is, and I feel like y'all should have done that from Rip. I know you're working on public safety a lot, but the public safety is going to be way less safe if Shigaraki gets his full body. Like, my man, when not complete, destroyed an entire city in a matter of seconds. What do you think he's going to do when he's at full power? Like, I'm not sure what the plan was, I'm not sure what the strat was, but learning that y'all just now are trying to focus on investigation, it seems a little bit too late. And we can definitely see that by how Midori gets cornered by the end of the chapter. But regardless, I understand their planning, I understand their reasoning. Honestly, that's what I love about this chapter. I understand every single side of every single situation even if i think even if i would have done differently just in certain scenarios considering how dangerous i consider shigaraki to be as a relative threat to the entirety of japan but regardless of that we move away from the top three heroes and we learn that all might is still tracking midoriya and i love it y'all pointed it out i believe it was last chapter or the chapter review before that all Might is seeing himself in Midoriya as someone who never rests and doesn't take care of himself, and he's concerned, and I love it too. You guys are you guys are right. Seeing how Midoriya is adopting the All Might mentality, but in the worst ways, like not resting, literally just tiring himself out, and it's great how he flashes back to Night Eye, whose death was still irrelevant, but it's good to see how All Might is now realizing his mistakes as a hero and how it's badly influencing the next generation. And I think that's very, very cool. And another thing that's very, very interesting is that we see All Might get, like, attacked by something. Like, his car literally blows up. And, um, that's a bit concerning. But I feel like he may just flash into his, like, full-size form for a moment. Like, I, we know he can still, like, flicker on. He still has, like, a twingle, a little taste of the ember still lingering inside him so i'm assuming all by isn't dead i don't think they do it that ungraciously especially since like i feel like he's gonna have a bigger death i feel like all for one has to kill him if he just gets if, he, if my man all might gets off screen <laughs> I, I, I would laugh i would laugh i feel extremely sad like i'm telling y'all all might has had the the character he, he's had the time to so when his death finally hits if it does if this is it 
then I may like have enough time to mentally prepare myself. But if I'm just reading a page, please, I hope I got to stay off social media whenever all my death hits. I have no idea when it's going to hit but when it does. Who I got to stay off social media because man, it'll ruin things. But basically, I don't think the, I don't think all Might's dead. We see his car blow up, but I don't think he's dead. And another interesting thing is his Midori. He notices that Midoriya's signal vanishes, his GPS signal vanishes, but then he blows up. I thought it would honestly be vice versa where Midoriya's GPS signal vanishes and then the car goes boom. But maybe this could just be like close, like these things are happening close in time period, but not different. And these could be two entirely different people attacking at the same time. So this could be interesting. Another interesting thing is we see that this weapon that's fired at Midoriya to destroy his cellular device, if you will, is able to like, it has a little microphone, not a microphone, a speaker attached to the end of it. And it seems to be like, I can't tell what it is because it's lodged in the wall. It seems to be like a sword of some sort. And honestly, I'll admit for a second, I had a flicker of hope that this was stained. I don't know why. I was like, I saw what looked like sort of like a sword hilt. And I'm like, oh, is it, is it that time? Is it, is it stained finally coming back? But no, not yet, not yet. At least I'm assuming not yet. And we get to see, oh, and yo, I just noticed that. That's crazy. But thing is, we see that this villain tells Midoriya, hey, a young boy in green, you're rocking with us, little boy. Come on, come with the strangers. And I wonder, like, is Jailbreaker? I'm gonna have to wait for the official translation on this one. And I just wonder, like, the one one that connects with the Jailbreaker. I'm assuming, I'm assuming that the connects with the Jailbreaker. They keep calling like Shigaraki slash All for One the Jailbreaker instead of just Shigaraki and All for One, which I guess makes sense. But I don't know, it's a weird title for them. Like, they have such worse things you could be calling them. But then, we get to the final page, and we see this woman with this nasty arm, bro. Like, honestly, she, like, I, her design, honestly, is weird. I'm not gonna lie, because it sort of looks like, this is gonna sound wild, sort of looks like a Fire Force outfit with extra details. Like, it's, if Horikoshi drew someone from Fire Force, this is what it would look like. Obviously, minus the gigantic, nasty, mutated arm arm someone's gonna fall for this like i'm talking about arm out and everything i can sense it already so there's already fan art i know this chapter dropped like a few hours ago but i know there's gonna be fan art i can just sense it with the arm out and everything people are gonna rock with this and like do do y'all but regardless of that <laughs> ooh, i just can't rock with it i think like, that's the thing i like the outfit design and i think her quirk is already super cool i'm just <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Ooh, that arm just made me feel uncomfortable. But things to note about this final page. One, Midoriya. Fantastic. Like, I'm loving Midoriya with this analytical thinking skill. Instantly realizing an assassin sent by all for one. But not gonna lie, buddy. If this assassin was really an assassin, they 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 shot you, boy. Like, your danger sense didn't go off or anything. Like, you didn't even react to the thing shooting past you and destroying your GPS tracker until it was done. If she really wanted you dead, you were shot through the head and it was over. And it also makes you wonder, can all for one be one for all, I mean, be harvested from a dead corpse? Because if so, or if not, why did he like kill Nana and them? Like he kept killing them, but I guess he just couldn't get one for all because he kept getting passed on too soon. Like, I don't know why... I mean, I guess the requirement is that it has to be given up with, like, consent and willingly. So, maybe you can't just be like, zoop, after off a dead body. But, I don't know. Because, like, is, does he want one for all because of all the quirks stockpiled up inside of it? Or does he want one for all just because it's a, me a nuisance and a menace to his, well, a menace to his menacehood? Like, I'm just wondering. Because, honestly, this would have been the perfect time to just off Midoriya. Like, <laughs> not gonna lie. He, she could have just shot him through the head and he'd be dead. My man's danger sense didn't go off for nothing. So I feel like he would have been dead. But, you know, one for all. Or no, one for all. All for one. Do you, buddy. You can just let them kidnap him. And as cool as this woman seems to be, and as hyped as I am to see that young boy overhaul still chilling there, no arms and everything. You know that man's catching hypothermia, though. Like, they are in the cold night rain, and my man's got nothing but a wet dress shirt on and cold windy rain. My boy got the meanest case of hypothermia. But regardless of that, I'm intrigued to see this combo in particular because she's dragging him around and obviously she's the one that freed overhaul in the first place we still don't know this lady's name but regardless of that she seems to be able to one spawn a weapon from her arm maybe like maybe this isn't necessarily a cannon in of itself like a propulsory type weapon as in like it fires its own things in natively but it's like something she can put things in because she's drawing something 
at least what looks like from her hair or from somewhere and she has those little like weird things on her hip so i'm assuming she can like load her arm with different types of weaponry and just fire from the arm which must have like amazing propulsion and honestly i'm just super intrigued to see how this woman fights because unless she can shrink that down into like a pistol if midoriya gets close what are you supposed to do like <laughs> Overhaul still down for the count, as far as I can tell. A lot of y'all were talking about how Overhaul could have like spontaneous quirk evolution, like everyone else has been having, and like be able to use his quirk from anywhere. And one, that would make it Overhaul just extremely busted, like unbelievably so. Like I'd have to redo the video. But on top of that, it would also like at the same time. Oh, that'd be really, really interesting. I wonder how that would work. I wonder. I wonder what Overhaul's doing here, basically, because he just seems like free hostage material. Unless he can suddenly spontaneously regrow his arms or something along those lines, I feel like Overhaul is more of a liability than an asset. But he may be an asset in the sense that he has like all these underworld connections in the modern villain world, so he may be useful on that front. But yeah, I'm intrigued to see how the next chapter plays out. This chapter was great, like. 10 out of 10, like, I'm not even gonna lie. Honestly, despite being short, despite having some reused panels, I think still the art we get in this chapter, beautiful. I think the society itself that we get to see is fantastic. And I love how, oh, this is so cool. I love how the civilians are like portrayed as the all, their own monsters of themselves. Because technically they are monster sources. See, that's art. That's visual storytelling right there. I love Horikoshi because he's great at that. The reason the civilians are shown in like this shadowy form with all these deformed faces and dark eyes and all this stuff like that is because the society is a menace to itself. Like, understandably so. We understand their beliefs and why they feel like they're being lied to and why they're blaming Endeavor for everything. But they're doing more harm to themselves than good. And they would listen to the heroes at the moment. Then they'd probably be safer. They probably wouldn't have to worry about the world as much. They'd be able to do different things. So they're their own monsters. And that's why they look all misformed and dark and misshapen. I love that. Great visual storytelling on Horikoshi's part. I also really like how I drew Deku in that one panel. But regardless of that, I think... The first part of this chapter, easy open. I love hearing them talk about these different things because it's real stuff that they need to worry about as heroes within the world. I love seeing all that. I love seeing how they have this whole discussion on Shigaraki and the interactions between All for One and One for All and the hypothetical possibility of Shigaraki not having like a hatred filled enough heart but they haven't met my boy shigaraki my boy shigaraki's a menace but on top of that we get to see the hypothetical death of all might even though i think he's fine and then on top of that we get to see this lady getting ready to go up against midoriya with a little pre-packaged no arm overhaul in the back i'm super hyped i really enjoyed this chapter this is a solid 10 out of 10 for me what do you guys think please tell me in the comment section down below thank you guys so much for watching please remember to like share comment and subscribe make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss out on anything on the channel and once again thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you guys have a wonderful day this is that guy the pencil writing off